Okay, hi Year 12s, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is the last video on polymers, proteins, and soaps. Woohoo! Oh my god! No, it's... Okay, so we're going to look at the limitations of soaps and the structure and nature of detergents. Okay, so, uh, soaps can precipitate in the presence of calcium and magnesium ions. So remember, what are salts? They're your polar head and your non-polar tail. Normally we have them with sodium ions and if you have a large amount of sodium ions they will also form a kind of solid stuff, right? But if you put calcium ions in there instead, they stick to them and they never let them go. And if they never let them go, they can't do their thing, right? So, um, precipitation of soap molecules. Uh, so you have your Ca2 plus plus two of these soap molecules, okay? Because remember, each of them is has a carboxylate group on the end, and therefore you'll need two of them to make the two minus. Okay, because remember, yep, right. So then you're going to just have Ca, and then bracket, and then whatever the equation for the soap is. Okay, because it's going to be quite a long substance, and two, right? And then it's a solid. Okay, so. Once precipitated out, they lose their ability to embed into grease and thus their cleaning power. Okay, so effectively, if they're stuck with each other, they can't be broken apart and put into oil, and so therefore, they don't clean. Okay, water that was naturally high in calcium and magnesium levels is called hard water. Okay, actually, also, that precipitate of, that precipitate of, uh, what's it, um, calcium ions and soap is called scum. Okay, I probably should have put that in the notes, may not have. All right, and lucky for you, Perth has naturally high calcium and magnesium levels in the water. So if you're ever um, doing your laundry and you read the instructions, it does tell you to add more into hard water. That means that it's a soap, which means that you need to add more, so maybe one and a half times the detergent. So if you ever do your own washing, which you hopefully will, remember to put in a little bit more because we live in Perth. Perth. Okay, to clean effectively in hard water, therefore you need more soap particles. That's why it tells you to put more soap. Uh, we use with a, uh, you have to put more soap particles must be used than in soft water. Okay, um, that's why the laundry detergent. Yeah, I said that. Okay. So, detergents are in compounds similar to soaps but do not precipitate in hard water. Okay, so that's useful. So, detergents have a non-polar tail, similar, and a polar head, similar. But instead of it being a carboxylate ion, it's a sulfonate ion or something similar. Okay, so common ones are dodecyl benzyl uh, sulfonate, which means it has a benzene group and an SO3 minus here. All right, um, and then it can be like S double bond, double bond, double bond. And I know that that's way too many, that's just how it is. All right. Uh, but I think that's a, the alkyl benzyl sulfonate. Okay, so the alkyl, that's there, the benzyl, the benzene, and the sulfonate, which is over there. Okay, so these are some structures of soaps, uh, so detergents. And um, the negatively charged sulfonate group on the end can create ligands of water particles, just like carboxylate ions, and thus its cleaning action is uh, very similar. It's identical to soaps, okay, except you just have a different polar head on there. So again, for my seals, again, you have to break them, again, they embed into the grease, again, you would agitate the grease, get more uh, detergent particles in, again, you um, um, shake it about, and then you get rid of, and you pour away the stuff at the end. All right, and that's it for hard waters and detergents, and for protein, polymers, and soap. Next, chemical synthesis, yay! Oh, whoops, not the end. <laughs> uh, Non-polar hydrocarbon tails are sourced from petroleum sources, blah, blah, blah. Thus, a petroleum product, not necessarily a uh, renewable resource. Meh, whatevs.